Let's try some examples that incorporate or sum in different formulas for sine and cosine, along with inverses. So for this first example, let's say we have the sine of the inverse sine, square root of 3 over 2, plus inverse cosine of 1. Okay, the thing to keep in mind is that inverses are just angles. So the inverse sine of square root of 3 over 2, I'm going to call this angle alpha. And then the inverse cosine of 1, I'll call this one beta. So in the case of alpha, since we're talking about the inverse sine, I can only be in the first or the fourth quadrant, which is from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. So I'm looking for where the y-coordinate is, square root of 3 over 2, which is pi over 3. Okay, so then for beta, I'm talking about inverse cosine, so that's only the first and second quadrant, so from 0 to pi. I'm looking for the angle where the x-coordinate is 1, which is at the angle 0. So I can actually find what these angles are, so this becomes the sine of alpha, which is pi over 3, plus beta, which is 0. In other words, sine of pi over 3, which we already said a second ago was square root of 3 over 2. Okay, now let's say that we have some inverses of some not so common values. So let's do a sine again. So the sine of, let's do the inverse sine of 3 fifths minus inverse cosine of negative 4 fifths. Okay, so again, inverses are just angles. So I'm going to call the first one alpha and the second one beta. So if alpha is the inverse sine of 3 fifths, then that must mean that the sine of alpha is 3 fifths. If beta is the inverse cosine of negative 4 fifths, then that means that the cosine of beta is negative 4 fifths. Okay, once again, we have to keep in mind the domain and the range of the inverses. So in the case of talking about inverse sine, the outputs can only be in the first or the fourth. Since I get positive, this is going to be in the first. I'm going to draw a triangle in the first quadrant whose sine is 3 fifths. I'm sure you can see that the adjacent side will be 4. For cosine, inverse cosine, outputs can only be in the first and second quadrant only. So since this is negative, it must be in the second quadrant. It cannot be anywhere else. I'm going to draw that triangle where the adjacent is negative 4, hypotenuse is 5. I'm sure you can guess the opposite is going to be 3. Okay, so the first triangle is for alpha, the second one is for beta. So rewriting the original problem as sine of alpha minus beta, I can expand this using our difference formula for sine. So sine of the first angle, cosine of the second angle, keeping minus, cosine of the first angle, sine of the second angle. Okay, so sine, cosine, cosine, sine, keep the sine. Okay, from our pictures, we can fill in all of this information. Sine of alpha is 3 fifths. Cosine of beta was negative 4 fifths. Cosine of alpha from the picture for alpha would be 4 fifths. And then sine of beta from the picture would be 3 fifths. Okay, so multiplying this out, the denominators would be, both of them would be 25. So then I would get negative 12 minus another 12. So this whole problem becomes negative 24 over 25. 